Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Hope you're having yourself a wonderful day. In today's video, we'll be reacting to Obama's uh, home, uh, the one that he grew up in uh, Indonesia. Then this video was suggested by Knox uh, Anindito. So thank you very much for taking the time to send me your recommendation and suggestion. We're going to get started with the video momentarily. For those of you who are new and who happen to come across this channel and this video for the first time, I'd like to take a moment and welcome you guys to the channel. I upload videos every day. So if you guys like the content as well as the channel and want to be part of this journey, then please consider subscribing to the channel and turning notification on so you're notified when a new video is uploaded. Stay tuned guys, we'll be right back. Welcome back guys, we're going to get started with the video momentarily and at the end of the video I'll be sharing with you my observation and reaction so please make sure you stay until the end and with that said let's get started with our video. When a six-year-old Barack Obama arrived in Jakarta, Indonesia, it all must have seemed a world away from what the young American boy was used to. This is the house that young Obama moved into when his family first came to Indonesia 40 years ago. At the time, these streets weren't paved and many of the houses didn't have electricity. Yet by Jakarta standards, this was middle class. The current home's owner allowed us an exclusive look inside. A large living room leads into a dining room and an atrium overlooks the kitchen. When Obama lived there, his family didn't have a refrigerator. This small bedroom looks out to the backyard, the part of the house Obama has said he'll never forget. His stepfather had turned their tiny backyard into any little boy's dreams. A monkey, birds, a dog, chickens, even two baby crocodiles. You used to play soccer here? Yes. Was he any good? Yeah. Indra Matawa lived just a few doors from Obama and remembers typical boyhood adventures. So you would get up on the roof yes. and fly kites? Yes. Obama was the first African-American many of the neighborhood kids had seen, and he endured endless teasing about his curly black hair. Barry dulu. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here, friends knew him as Barry. 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 I don't know Obama. Barry Satoro. He had taken the last name of his Indonesian stepfather. Indra says what he remembers most about Barry, who was actually quite chubby at the time, was how much he would eat whenever he came to Andrew's home. He'd come over and eat you out of house and home. Yes, yes, every day. While the street the boys lived on was middle class, like most of Jakarta, the stark reality of poverty is just a short bike ride away. Obama has said the things he saw in Jakarta will remain with him the rest of his life. After Barack's stepfather landed a higher paying job with an American oil company based in Jakarta, he was able to afford to move the family to this house in what's considered a nicer neighborhood. They were able to afford not only a refrigerator, but some part-time servants. Obama's family rented the house from this man's family. He gave Inside Edition exclusive access. This was a little sitting room. This is a small study where friends say Barack did his homework every day. This is kind of the master bedroom. master bedroom. The house gave the family more room. After they moved in, Obama's half-sister, Maya, was born. Barack's bedroom was in here. And this was Barack's bedroom, yeah. a room he is likely to remember very well. According to Obama, every weekday morning, his mother would bring breakfast to his bedroom and then tutor him in English for three hours before she went to work and before he went to school. But it wasn't all studying. Rock quickly made friends in the new neighborhood. Boyhood friend Slummit remembers playing ping pong with Obama in this room and playing Monopoly with him for hours on this little porch. He lost a lot. He didn't win all the time at Monopoly. You called him Barry. Barry. This friend named Sonny Barry. says he never expected that his old friend could quite possibly be the next American president. It does surprise you. Yes. He remembers his friend Barry as funny and adventuresome, but says his mother made sure his studies always came first, a commitment that resulted in Obama attending two vastly different schools while in Jakarta, where he made impressions on his teachers that would last for more than 40 years. You really do remember him? Yes. Do you know who that is? Uh, yes. Who? It's Barack Obama. What's he famous for? Uh, he's the... 
is going to be a president of America. This is the Assisi Catholic Grammar School in Jakarta, Indonesia. And Barack Obama is on his way to becoming its most famous former student. Barack Obama. The only record of Obama having attended the school is this old register. And look, it lists his name as Barry Satoro. That's the name Obama took from his Indonesian stepfather, Lolo Satoro. He was smart in mat mathematics. Very smart in mathematics. Yes. And this but is Obama's first grade teacher. As it is today, in 1968, the school was very crowded. 40 kids to a class. But she had no problem remembering Obama. She's bigger and taller with a black skin, a curly hair. Obama may have stood out, but he was popular, an excellent student, and even showed signs back then that he's a true politician. When he was entering the classroom, he would shake the hands of his friends and say, how are you? And he would greet everyone in the classroom. His third grade teacher says Obama wrote a composition saying one day he wanted to be president, but didn't say of what country. That class register lists his nationality as Indonesian and his religion as Islamic. But his teachers say that was probably because his stepfather was. When Obama's stepfather changed jobs and moved the family to another neighborhood in Jakarta, Obama's mother enrolled him in the Basuki Public School, which has a reputation for being one of the best in the city. This was your third grade classroom? Yanto and Ai recall their classmate Barry vividly. He was the chubby boy who towered over the other kids in the class. Barry sat here, Barry Barak sat there, and then you sat there. The school's makeup reflects the population of Indonesia, more than 90% Muslim. Not long ago, the school became an issue in the presidential race. The internet was buzzing with false reports that the school was a fundamentalist madrasa, a strict training ground for radical Islamics. When you heard that people in the U.S. were saying the school was a madrasa, what did you think? Misinformation. It's unlikely that whoever started that rumor ever set a foot inside the school, because if they had, they would have found hundreds of smart, happy and very independently acting kids. Former students and teachers say it's always been that way. There is a mosque in the school. It overlooks the playground. And every day at noon, the children are called to prayer. But it's not a requirement. Our cameras were allowed to go inside the mosque and observe the children in prayer. The boys and girls are separated, as is tradition in Islam. But there is also a small chapel for the handful of Christian students who attend the school. They assemble in the chapel at noon for Bible reading and prayer. <laughs> During our visit, the students seemed more into badminton and basketball than religious nice. study. There you go. Obama attended the Basuki Public School for less than two years. However, his classmates recently reunited to take a good luck berry photo. And at the Assisi Catholic School, Obama's third grade teacher praised every day that the youngster she once taught in Indonesia, remarkable as it may seem, becomes president of the United States. So, uh, you know, like I said in my uh, previous video when I reacted to uh, him talking about Indonesia, I didn't know that he used to live in Indonesia. And so, uh, it, uh, it's, it's nice, you know, that you can see this, for example, he talks uh, positive about Indonesia. It just shows the positivity and the kindness of the Indonesian uh, people. A couple of things that caught my eye was one, flying the kite. Uh, you guys have the exact same thing, kites, that we have in Afghanistan. Most other places, like here in Canada, they don't have those kind of kites. They just have ones that you basically hold on to it and it just flies. But the one that you guys have is just like us. You can control it, make it move around. And we used to do a lot, so it brought a lot of memories of my childhood. And another thing was that the reporter was asking the two guys, his classmates, that uh, what did you think about uh, people saying that this is a madrasa? Well, what's wrong about the madrasa? Madrasa basically means school. Like, <laughs> if you, you have to understand, for example, what the word means, uh, madrasa does not mean like a, a training place for terrorists, right? It just means school uh, or a place of, you know, learning, right? So um, it's pretty funny because if somebody says a madrasa, yeah, it's a madrasa. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just somewhere that people go to learn, right? Uh, what they teach is a different story. It doesn't necessarily have to be at the madrasa. It could be anywhere that you could learn something positive or negative, right? Uh, but just, just my thought on, uh, on that. So that was uh, pretty cool, yeah. It's, uh, it's nice to see, you know.
uh, shows the positivity as well, like I said, the kindness of the Indonesian people who welcome a stranger from, from outside the country and as well as treated them uh, well. So it's really, really nice. I enjoyed uh, watching it. Uh, I hope you guys did too. If you did, please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And if you want me to check out another video, please put in the comment section below. As always, thank you very much guys for all your love and support. I hope you guys have yourself a wonderful day. Take care of yourself and your family. Inshallah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Wassalam.